Another beautiful morning. Sun in and up, but the moon is so bright you can walk by moonlight easily. So we'll hunt our way up to that saddle where we saw that buck yesterday. Hopefully he's back in there. Or maybe another one's back in there. So off we go. I couldn't glass any harder. <laughs> I don't know if there's such a thing as eye fatigue, but from looking in my spotter and holding this eye closed, <laughs> I feel like I got a cramp in my eyelid. Right away, Marcus spotted a, a little buck. I'm like, man, this is the day, and this is it. Yesterday we saw 35 deer, today we'll probably see 70. Well, so far, I've seen that little buck, and then I saw a mule deer doe and her fawn out here. You see anything over there, Marcus? <clears throat> Two hunters. Two hunters? Yeah. Really, are they on that same ridge again? They're on this knob right down here. Oh, really? They're hunting right around that trick tank then, huh? Could you tell if it looked like the two from yesterday? Two different people. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well. I'm going to pack up and go back and glass that other side to see if I can find something in the shade. At least I'll have the sun a little bit at my back. I've been glassing this, and man, the heat waves are just really intense right now. So maybe I should have shot that one yesterday. Maybe I should have put a stock on that big two-point in the evening yesterday afternoon. But I didn't. So, kind of like mist in the wind, that opportunity whoo, evaporated. Now I gotta go create another opportunity. I suspect if I find any deer, they're gonna be bedded in the shade. I wish I had an explanation for the lack of deer today. One deer this morning, at least one whitetail. And Marcus and I, our eyes are almost bugging out. We've been glassing so much. And uh, I guess that's a little bit of a verification of what the drought did to deer here. Uh, I had uh, hunted this three years ago <clears throat> and they'd had a couple of years of drought. But then the year I hunted it had another year of drought and then most of the next year of drought and uh, one year of good rain in between and now another year of drought. Just the total deer numbers are down. Uh, the amount of sign you see, the amount of tracks. Uh, we were hunting it in an earlier season, which most people would say is not as good of a season to see a lot of deer. We saw way more deer than what we're seeing. Uh, saw more bucks, more deer. And uh, I guess that goes along with the data put out by Arizona Game and Fish that the drought had just decimated multiple years of fawn crops. And that's not good. You know, that, that is what these deer are dependent upon down here. And as a result, they cut tag numbers heavily I feel really lucky to have even drawn this tag. And, you know, they 
they have an allocation in their deer management plan and there's a really good video out on their uh, website and they went through how they allocate X percentage of the harvest to firearms, which is rifle and muzzleloader, and X percent to archery. And so the amount of tags in each category is a function of success rates and other things. So when they really cut the firearms tags, they took some of these units that were over the counter for deer, and they said, for, for archery deer, and said, look, if we leave these as over the counter, as much as archery harvest is small, it's going to be way more than our allowed percentage under our, our management plan. And so they put a bunch of these units on over the counter, uh, or that were over the counter. They put them on like a quota system, and uh, at least for non-residents. And I think they left it open for residents, if I remember right. And if you talk to the biologists, uh, and I talk to a lot of them, I'm like, you know, what, what, what's the rationale for, for that uh, allocation? And they said, well, the primary harvest happens in rifle season, which I'm doing now. And so that's really where we can control things. But to be fair to the people who are primarily archers versus primary firearms hunters, we got to keep this split and we got to adjust accordingly. So it's a little more complicated than I understood it to be. Uh, I've asked them what effect archery has on the total population down here. And they said even with the big spike of, of the increase in success rates for the whitetails down here, and I think it was 2016 and 17, 15, 16, something like that. They said it's still so insignificant that it doesn't drive the the population numbers at all because they have no doe seasons here. There are in Arizona, the only place they have doe seasons are they have a youth hunt up on the Kaibab uh, for mule deer, but they have no doe hunting of these whitetails. So the population, which is always driven by the female part of the, the population, is strictly a function of fawn survival for the the health of the herd. They have to adjust all that and they know full well that they're just adjusting on the margins because they're adjusting the male harvest, the buck harvest. What's really driving total numbers is drought and how well the, the fawns and uh, the, even the does and their fawns survive those periods. So I think part of what we're seeing here today is just the result of that many years of drought. You know, and when you're living in a desert environment, super arid uh, the vegetation it's hardy it can survive some of the some of the drought conditions but it's not very productive habitat during those those uh, drought periods and you know you think about how hard it is for these these fawns to get through that period it's really tough and that's why we uh we gotta hope that <laughs> get more moisture you know uh, Arizona went through some droughts in the 90s uh, and early 2000s and they cranked back tags and when they got good moisture for three or four years they cranked the tags back up and that's how their their management strategy works is you, you adjust every year and to their credit they, they do that uh, they and a few other states are are very diligent about adjusting tag numbers every year. I just got what the uh, projections are for elk and pronghorn because that draw happens here in early February. Uh, and they've adjusted them again. They, it's unfortunate that pronghorn numbers and pronghorn tags in Arizona are just every year. Some years it flattens out good moisture year, good fawn crops, they might increase it by a couple. But by and large, because of the moisture issues, uh, they're just not doing well. And so they have no choice but to knock the numbers down, the, the tag numbers, and that's what they do. I, I wish they didn't have to, but the, the secret to having more opportunity is having more robust herds 
and that's habitat, water, and maybe disease to some degree. Uh, water meaning moisture from the sky or man-made moisture placed on the ground. Uh, but without those, we're just fighting over an ever-shrinking uh, resource. And I, I don't know what the long-term answer is if a dry cycle continues like it has for the last 30 years. I think about when I went to college down here in the mid-80s, it was a wet cycle. And you could pick these tags up that were down in this part of the state pretty much for any season you wanted. There were leftover tags. There were that many tags. But it was a super moist period from about 83 to 87. Uh, and I guess it was a demonstration of what happens when you put a lot of water on a desert landscape. You're going to have a lot of animals, you're going to have a lot of quail, you're going to have a lot of rabbits, you're going to have a lot of deer. You're, it's just the time of, of good, good living, I guess, when you get a lot of moisture. And that hasn't been the case here. 2023 is one of the worst moisture years ever, so it's not good for, for the future of, of what these deer are looking at. And uh, it'd really be nice if they had one of their wettest winters ever and one of their most powerful monsoon seasons because a lot of their moisture comes July, August, September in the monsoon flow that comes up from the ocean. But if they don't get that, it's really, really tough. And uh, I didn't get that this year. So I think I'm seeing evidence of the fact that multiple, well, probably almost a decade of hard drought has eventually taken a toll just on the total numbers of deer. And I, I just expected to see way more does than what we're seeing. And I, I completely understand and agree with their policy of not harvesting does out of the, the whitetail herds here. Just bucks only because it's those does that are going to sustain and, and rebuild the herds when the moisture comes beautiful landscape should be deer everywhere maybe they are and i'm just not finding them time to do some stretching exercises i think oh I gotta climb up that mountain again. Marcus heckled me to the point where if I don't climb it, I'm a wuss. Never said that. We he can, didn't say that. We can sit here too. We're just not seeing a whole lot of deer. <laughs> no, I'm not sitting here. <laughs> I've sat here long enough. Oh. Oh. and we're about 300 yards from where we bumped a couple bucks yesterday when I passed on so it's ugly and gnarly and steep but we're just gonna side hill 
look in these places right now. We got the wind in our face for the first time all day, so hopefully it stays that way. See if I can get a better shooting today. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what he is for size. Good. Hit him. Where'd he go? Down and left. I zoomed all the way into the spotter, so I lost him, but I think he... That was really weird. We came and set up right here because yesterday we saw a big two point down here. So we're just looking and looking, looking over here. And all of a sudden I see something right across from us. And I look and two deer had got up out of their beds. We'd been here for 10 minutes and it was a buck, a goofy looking buck. I have no idea what's going on and a doe. And you can see I had to lay downhill. I had all these rocks underneath me. And uh, we just took our time and it was just dead perfect. And uh, he ran out of frame. He's down here to our left somewhere. So they're so hard to see that I'm gonna walk over here, cross the fence. Marcus is gonna mark me to where the shot was. And then I'm gonna follow the blood trail down. But you just, with these little buggers and how everything works, you don't want to take any chances. So once I get over there and I find the blood and everything, then Marcus can come over and hopefully we find a dead buck. We, we looked at it on the footage and it looked like a perfect shot. And he just ran downhill. So. pretty confident the shot felt good everything felt good it looks good on footage but until you're right there looking at him you don't, you don't count your, your victories He was standing next to that tree up there about, I don't know, 10, 12 yards away. And he was pretty easy to track. He was mopping the hillside with uh, red stuff. And he's laying right here. 
you're going to see why we thought he might have had velvet. He's massive. Oh, geez. But, but wait till you see the side that faked us out. Oh, that's why I thought, so I'm wrong. <laughs> this is a giant agar. Look huh? at that. Huh. I mean, that's look pretty... at the mass on that thing. That's For a coos buck? Look at the mass. You don't see coos bucks with that kind of mass very often. Wow. And, and then whatever this is that's going on here, <laughs> he tried to grow some... Maybe, I don't know if that was going to be an eye guard or something happened. <laughs> oh, he broke something back here on the back side. He got a fresh break. Oh, well. Well, sir, I misID'd him. <laughs> oh, Marcus, if I would have had my spotter out and saw him, I'm shooting him. I was like, it With looks that? like it. it has a lot of mass. I mean, I, I thought it was, yeah. I just saw those two beams. I am so happy with this. I know some people will be like, oh, he doesn't score very well. I said, you, folks heard me say it, you either get big or you get ugly or goofy or something like that. This guy has maxed out, red line the goofy meter. This is the most brown colored coos I think I've ever seen. His neck is gray, but his body is brown like a Ohio whitetail or something. Maybe some of them are like that, and I've just not seen it. But to get there, a fighting mark. Or maybe it's gotta be old, right? I mean, look how that's gray and that'll be really interesting to age him. Yeah, we the Arizona Game and Fish sent me an envelope. We got to pull the two bottom incisors. Uh, we do that anyhow, but they want it uh, to age them. Look at that, though, for for a coos buck. That's mass. <laughs> Oh. How lucky is that, huh? That pack old food here. Yeah. Good feeling. I might not say that when I get back to camp, but right now. <laughs> that hunting feeling. Trying to please put my coat, so put it on my back. I might regret that, but it'll be 30 degrees. And Marcus says, "Ah, it's all downhill. I'll carry the whole thing for you." Good, might even be that. All right. I've packed out three coos deer with Marcus Hockett. The only three I've ever packed out have been with him. And every time it's in the dark and we're going down a drainage. And two of the three times, we just ran into a mountain lion right there about 70 or 80 yards across from us. This is the second time we've run into a mountain lion doing this, Marcus. I know, that's crazy. What do you got maybe a call yeah, or something? Maybe that's more common. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> mountain lines out. You always run into mountain lines packing out these. Think here? we can get out down here? Yeah. It's not great, but we will. <laughs> Might have to take our packs off. I think we can climb off this. This is that spring wade was talking about. Oh next, yeah. You know, I kind of, when I think about it, yeah. going to the bottom, I'm trying to think of all the scenarios when I've done it, and I'm like, oh, that was worth it. I can't think of any. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm questioning that right now. <laughs> Should have walked back up to the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, made it. Oh. Oh. 
We made it, thanks to Marcus Hockett. If it wasn't for Marcus, I don't know that I would have made it. I'd have been going back for another trip tomorrow. Whew! Oh, the... man. But wasn't that a lot of fun? Oh, that was a blast. <laughs> I love it. Oh. That's cool. That's super cool. We're, we're thinking this might be the buck that we thought had an extra main beam yesterday. Let's have to we, look at the footage. I don't, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we'll look at the footage, I guess. The dude rolled in. Oh. Look at that. Dude, I'm such a cool buck. He's crazy looking. Now that is freaking cool. When I walked up to him, I couldn't have been happier. What do you suppose is going on there? I don't know. When we're when we're looking at the pictures, I'm like, did he break that other one off, or is it just bladed? It looks like it's just bladed, huh? Super heavy. Yeah. Gnarly, freaking knotted buck. Oh, really cool. Uh, we yeah. just got here. We saw your headlights coming. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, we. Dang Marcus good. Marcus hasn't even taken his back off yet. <laughs> <sighs> well, you like them cool. unique, Randy, and this one's that uh, one fits the bill, wouldn't you say? Yeah, hey, very unique. Crazy heavy base. Kind of. Yeah. I was so happy with him. Oh. We couldn't figure out what was going on with him. He was, was standing that the same in the one shade. You saw? I think it's the same one, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But we shot him well over a mile from where we'd seen him yesterday. Right? Who, who, who spotted him first? We got we're, we got a little bet going. Randy definitely spotted him. All right, are we? Dang, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we count if it is the same box, then I... Yeah, Marcus <laughs> spotted him the first day. No, we're talking today. today. Yeah, this was. Uh, we spotted him in, or Randy spotted him in rifle range. Like he was, we shot from where. Two hundred eighty-six. Was yards. he bedded really? down? Wow. They were. And we were looking over here. We'd been there ten minutes, maybe. Yeah. I don't know how long. Maybe longer. Looking down this side. Looking down this side. And they're in in the shade of this uh, slope right out in front of us. Well, down and out in front of us. Yeah. And I'm looking. And I'm sitting like. With my bare eyes, I'm like, I'm like you're going to believe this, Marcus. There's a buck in the door right there. <laughs> wow. But we couldn't make out what he was because he's in the shadows. Right. And uh, it's just kind of weird to tell. And Marcus asked, he's like, you want me to get the spotter out? I'm like, yeah, you got to because I can't tell if those are trees behind him or bushes, and I don't want to shoot a doe. So they stood there completely motionless for probably seven or eight minutes and I had to get in the prone position laying down hill with head down hill and shoot you know kind of cock your neck that way did you hit did the scope get you uh-uh very nice yeah that's a cool buck yeah I you know I wasn't sure what we had when we shot and then when I walked up to him I'm like oh, I just, like, he's just naughty he like well, he, like, he likes them ugly, knots. Randy. He likes the ugly ones. But not up on the eye guard. Yeah. It's like all the yeah, way up gnarly. to the tip of it. So how do you guys want the backstrap cooked? I guess it's a bigger question. You got a preference? Not very well done. Not very well done. <laughs> all right, you and Jones. That's about all I got to say. You and Jones are in the same book, then. <laughs> I maybe should have you guys be the taste testers decide what's too well done or not well done. It ain't running, it's too well done. Really? Okay, well. Were you shooting the 7mm? Yeah. Yeah. 140 grain Nosler Acubone. Wade? 
here. Check and tell me I don't want to get chewed out here. Kind of like that. <laughs> well done. Thank you, Andy. Very good. Damn. You are right though, Marcus. For whatever reason, tenderloins get rubbery if you cook them. No day you shoot them. I don't know why. Yeah, same day tenderloins a little tougher. It's still worth it. <laughs> Ladle up some onions and peppers. Tipped over about 345. 345 and it's 7 753 right now. So hmm. four hours ago. Nice. That's fresh, folks. <laughs> Inspected by Wade Zarlingo. Hey, what? It doesn't get much better, really. <laughs> Especially since I didn't have to work for it much. 